Hey guys, and welcome to this video. And uh, today's video, we are going to be focusing on painting the Flamers of Zinch. So, for those of you who have been around the channel for a while, you'll know that I've been furiously painting lots of demons. Um, and part of my Thousand Sons and Demons army, I have got a stack load. And if you have a look at some of the videos, I'll put some uh, cards up in the corners here. Um, just to sort of put some links into some of the other videos, like the base painting and some of the Thousand Suns uh, painting, which I've done quite a while ago. It has been a while since I've done a painting video. Um, I am quite busy at the moment in, in the real world, unfortunately. I've got a lot going on. I won't bore you with details. Um, but yeah, so we're going to crack into painting the Flamer models. Now they're quite quite simple models, they're not difficult to build. They're a uh, couple of bits for the head, two halves of a body, and then you can add some tentacle bits and uh, some flamey bits that are sticking out of them. Um, so they're, yeah, they're relatively simple models, so I've already put them together, already primed them uh, white. Um, I actually use Vallejo White uh, Surface Primer. Let me just grab... So I actually use uh, Airbrush uh, Vallejo Surface Primer. You can see that there, so that just goes straight through the airbrush. You can just use Games Workshop Spray Paint, um, Corax White or whatever they're calling it these days, and just to base it that way. Um, but doing it white means that the, the brighter colours do come through, um, and these are quite sort of bright and garish kind of models, so that I'm focusing on sort of a blues and purples and then uh, either reddish flames or greenish flames. So that's the kind of effect I'm going for. So um, yeah, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to drop it a thumbs up. Click the like button, uh, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff that goes on with YouTube. Uh, it keeps me motivated to make these videos for people to watch. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll be commentating through each of, the, uh, each of the steps on the video. So hope you enjoy, cheers. So here we go then, these are the paints that we'll be using during this stage and this is one of the flamer models that I've mentioned that I've uh, primed white and assembled and all that kind of stuff and I've just blue tacked him onto the top of an empty empty paint pot. The first stage of the uh, process then is a, a double shade in fact of Drakenhoth Nightshade uh, and then we use Druki Violet to uh, blend in some purple ends to the, uh, to the model. And then it's several um, shades of dry brush through different uh, Thousand Sun colour scheme blue. So we've got Thousand Suns, we've got Araman Blue, Temple Guard Blue. And then for the bright uh, greeny flames, we're using the Nihilac Oxide, which is one of these weird technical paints that requires a good bit of a mix. Um, and then we've got some blue horror, and then we've got some white. And then most of that is, well, in fact, all of it is dry brushed in various shades and various various pressures as you uh, as you go across the model. To give a bit of variety then we're going to go with green and or orangey type flames. So the first thing we do for the orange flames then is a golden yellow followed by a wash or shade of Cassandora yellow and then we use, not that one, that's actually the wrong one, we use a hot orange followed by a gory red or a dark red at the very ends of the flaming effect and then finally it's a very light dry brush of black to sort of represent the sort of soot effect that you get within uh, within flames if you were to look very carefully. Once we've got all the paints ready we are hot to trot. So we've got our guy ready and we've got our first shade which is the uh, dark blue Drakenhoth nightshade blue and that's the first thing we're going to be applying liberally all over the model. Um, because it is a demon type model I'm not overly concerned about the perfect smoothness or the pooling effect that you get when you do a shade wash over a model. So any inconsistency, I'm not actually fussed around um, too much. As long as you get into all the nooks and crannies and make sure that everything is given a sensible shade, um, I'm happy. Um, demons <coughs> you know, are a bit funky in their nature. They're born of uh, warped material. So anything that's super regimented and super perfect like you would get on uh, the Emperor's uh, Finest with their Space Marines or whatever, you know, you're looking for a bit more of a consistent effect. Now, Ideally, you want something slightly more inconsistent with, with demons, I think. So, if it pulls a little bit, I'm not overly fussed. Um, and if it's quite thin, I'm not overly fussed either, because that will add to a, a slightly different effect as I paint through. I think I've actually got nine of these flamers kicking around that I'll be uh, painting pretty much in a large batch uh, as we go through. It's always quite a good idea. If, if you're doing 
models of this kind of nature where you're doing a lot of washing and then a lot of dry brushing, batch painting is awesome. It gets the models done pretty quick. Uh, so you can get them straight onto the tabletop and it means they're, they're consistent in the way that you paint them. So uh, that's the technique I'm using here. So I'll just be showing you the one model, but in the background I'll be painting the others up all at the same time. So yeah, just making sure that all that blue shade gets all over the model. And uh, yeah, and then we'll be ready and let that dry and then we'll be ready for the next stage. And just because I mentioned it, yep, I've got a whole bunch of these going on in the background. It was all part of the same batch paint. So the next stage then is a second coat of Drakenhoth Nightshade. So uh, I think the first one covers a little bit thin over a white, uh, white base. So to get that extra depth, all I'm doing now is applying a second coat exactly the same as the first. And again, remember not to worry if it gets a bit too patchy or pulls a bit funny. Um, it's just making sure you get good solid coverage and that you have that second second coat for that extra depth. So once that blue has fully dried, it takes about an hour, hour and a half maybe, depending on how liberally you apply the colour. Um, the next step then is to get some of this lovely Druki Violet shade and then apply that to wherever you feel is sensible. I mean, what I've done here for a bit of consistency is all the arms towards the, the flame of pistol weapons that they carry and then I've either gone with more of the head in a purple shade or more of the sort of the bottom opening weird mouth part they have right at the very end of the model. And in some cases I've done it on both parts, so either the head and the bottom and the arms or just arms and head or arms and the bottom. So I've gone with a bit of variety across the nine of these that I'm doing in this, in this same batch and you'll see those towards the end of the video. And in fact, you'll see some of them here. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so I've just sort of mixed and matched where I've applied that uh, that purple shade to. So uh, back to our example model that we're going on here. So that's now fully dried, and we've just got sort of the purple on the on the arm tips and the head. And now what we do is we move into several shades of dry brush. So this we start off with Thousand Suns Blue, and you really want very little paint on this. I know people go on about dry brushing, and it's a very easy technique, but if you want to apply it right, it's all about pressure and paint quantity. So what I'm doing here is an exceptionally light dry brush. I'm using a Medium Games Workshop dry brush. I think their dry brushes are actually really good. Uh, I've used several different uh, versions of dry brush before, but I think the way these work is just right for me. Um, so this is a very light dry brush. So I'm focusing on the upper arms and towards the lower part of the model. So where it's more blue than purple, I've gone with a uh, a bit more on the dryer brush than I have anywhere else and then I'm just using the blue as a very light highlight to the purple so just sort of building up the colour just very gradually very gently not a lot of paint and not a lot of pressure and I think that's the key to making sure that you get those smooth transitions it really helps the transition between the the, uh, the blue and the purple and starts bringing it out and where you've got those um, quite raised tentacle parts and all the folds in the in the body fabric as it were, it really begins to bring those out and it's not a very high, uh, hard dry brush as I've said. And uh, yeah, that's that's what we do next and that sort of binds the two colours that we've got uh, together so far. And then once we finish with Thousand Suns Blue, we move straight onto Araman Blue. Now what I've not done uh, in between each stage is fully cleaned my dry brush. Um, I didn't think it was necessary. Um, you're not using a lot of paint, and I think it helped with a little bit of blend as well. So you've still got a bit of darker blue as you move into the lighter blues. And if you do sort of one light dry brush and then a second dry brush, you maintain some of the older pigment in the brush, um, just enough to help the transition. And again, sort of just picking out the sort of the higher points, uh, especially the upper arms here, and a little bit of that upper back area, and then really focusing. Uh, towards the bottom of this particular model. So I want it sort of lighter at the bottom and more purple at the top um, But just a very light dry brush over those purple parts just to bring out a little bit more Highlight there's a lot of detail in the faces on this. So it's not just one face he has He's sort of got 
three or four or even five or six mouths all spewing out of the top of the model. So it's, it's, it's pretty ugly and there's a lot of detail in there so just uh, picking that out with a simple dry brush. Trying to line highlight or trying anything else on those head areas would uh, would leave you uh, uh, in a lot of agony and a lot of pain. Um, so dry brushing is definitely the way forward for that particular area. But again, very little pressure here, uh, especially especially over the purple parts. Maybe a bit more pressure towards the bottom where you really want to pick that highlight out, but certainly very light where the purple is. Moving on to the penultimate highlight then, it's using Blue Horror. Now this is sort of a, a very light grey colour really, more than a blue. And this we're really using exceptionally light dry brushing here just to pick out sort of real edges and as you can see I've not changed my dry brush again I've kept the same color on this you've still got a bit of that Araman blue um, so the actual blue the blue horror color isn't that bright but mixed in with a little bit of leftover on the brush it's all good so really focusing on the very tips of the uh, the bottom of the body I want to call it a skirt because it's a skirt with a big mouth pouring out with loads of sharp teeth and flame things pointing out but it's not really a skirt um, but yeah, just focusing on that very end so it sort of picks up um, the very edge detail. I'm not worried about when it goes on the flames, we'll cover all that in, a, in, in the uh, following sections. But just making sure we pick up those light little bits. And again, also just on the tops of those arms, uh, just to bring those out a little bit as well. And just an exceptionally light dry brush over the face, just to pick up the real top raised parts of all the, the mouth and head details. Really hardly any pressure here. Just a very, very, almost tickling the model uh, as gently as possible. And with that last little bit of dry brush, the uh, the skin is pretty much done. Um, so we just uh, get to compare now between what the uh, original base colour was, so just with the blue wash. Now we can see what all those colours have done um, to that blend of blue to purple. And, uh, you can just see the difference there sort of nice and brighter towards the bottom and on those arms but still maintains that blue to purple transition across the model and it just sort of brings it out just makes it stand out all those details that are in this model it is very detailed lots of folds in the skin lots of weird flamey effects and tentacles and everything else on these little flamer models um, but you can see the difference just from those dry brushes and it's pretty seamless transition so it's, it's a nice effect Next then we need to go back to the flames. So I've got a white here, I use dead white from Vallejo but any uh, any standard base white will do. Uh, Games Workshop, P3 or whoever your preference is. And what we're now gonna do is paint all the little flame effects. So there's some on the fists, some hanging out of the mouth, some out of the bottom of, I'm gonna call it the skirt again, out the bottom of the skirt, and then all along his rear spine as well. So there's lots of these little flamey bits. There's a couple on the ends of the elbows as well. So just make sure that you're looking for all of those uh, little flamey bits. Apologies, I am having uh, some camera focus issues. I've actually switched cameras. My webcam is is playing up when it's near my lighting. I think it's getting some kind of weird interference. So I've actually switched to my DSLR um, and fixed the focus, but then I kept moving my hands towards the camera a bit too eagerly. So a little bit does get a bit blurred out, but apologies for that. But you can see what's exactly going on here. I'm just picking out all those, all those flames. And you do this whether you're going to go with the uh, bright flame effect or whether you're going to go with the green flame effect either way all requires all that white to be retouched in so that's all we're doing next and then once all that white's done you can see how many of those little flamey effects there are across this model all at the bottom at the top out the mouth and all the rest of it on those elbows you can see there's quite a few um, as I throw it across my desk but yeah that's that's the effect we're looking for so we just um, uh, all up to there so this next stage then we're going to do the green flame effect and we're using this technical oxide paint um, really does require a good mix as it does separate whatever ingredients have gone into this paint pot do separate quite easily and this is the easiest one of the the two flame effects I'm going to do uh, with regard to speed and effect because this is literally one coat of this technical paint directly over white and it's done leads a little bit of drying time but it does settle in all the recesses and leaves all the high high points in a, in a near translucent white effect. So all we do is just apply this stuff and just being careful not to get it onto all that blue skin that we've just spent uh, a while doing. So just, uh, yeah, every little bit of white, white just cover it in this uh, Nilla, Nilla Hike, I can't even pronounce it, 
Nila Nihilalak. Nihilak? Nihilalak. We'll go with that, shall we? The, the green oxide technical paint, that's the one we want. If anyone has any clue on how to pronounce that, then uh, feel free to leave a comment in the uh, section below. And once we are done, we end up with that. So all the, uh, you can see that it's green where it needs to be green and white where it needs to be highlighted and it self does it. You don't need to do any more to it than that. You could be really picky and make it out of a green wash and then all the rest of it, but you don't need to. I've just gone nice and simple. Next stage then, I've already got bases. Uh, I'll leave a little card in the top corner there to a link to how I've made all my bases. Now I've done a big batch job of my lava basing. And at this stage, quite happy to uh, get the shapes by the looks of it. Uh, quite happy to glue straight onto a base now because uh, you don't need to sort of be getting into any funny angles where those bases might get in the way. Flame has come with 32 millimeter bases, which is all the rage these days. Uh, and all I've done is made sure I've scraped all the paint off the bottom of the model where it contacts the base and then using uh, Gorilla Glue, I use Gorilla Super Glue uh, because these are cork, so you're going plastic to cork so plastic glue is no good for you, you need super glue give it a few seconds and then that is set and we're good to go once the model is suitably dry uh, we can now move on to the teeth uh, so there's lots of mouth areas and teeth looking things all over these models. Uh, there's normally sort of two or three uh, rows of teeth and mouth around the around the skirt. I'm going to keep calling it a skirt. Um, there's some on the main face that you see on the main part of the model and then some on the side faces that it's got. And then also some on those hands. There's some weird sort of mouth teeth things going on on, that, on, the, on the hands as well. So all I'm doing is making sure that I give a good little beastie brown colour uh, to those teeth and uh, making sure I catch all of the teeth on the model because there are so many. And then once we're done we can move on to the next stage. You can see and just make out all the brown areas there's lots of little weird mouthy bits and teeth bits all over these models. So uh, yeah just make sure you find all of those and being careful not to go on to any of the bits you've already completed. Uh, the next stage I'm using a car key to highlight those teeth. So uh, I've used brown and then khaki, but you know, a lot of people we might use uh, a darker brown and then sort of a bone white colour or whatever, whatever takes your fancy, but I'm, I'm going for a khaki over the top, I think that's just uh, a suitable highlight. And all we've got to do now is just find the teeth with a very fine brush and a very blurred camera, because you can't see anything at this close range. I am very sorry, but you'll see the details in the effect at the very end, and all you're doing is just picking out teeth. I'm sure many of you have painted teeth in Warhammer before but what you got to do is just pick a nice sensible sort of double zero, triple zero brush and just be very uh, careful and just pick out those little teeth. And once we're done a very fine tip highlight of pure white is applied to the very ends of the teeth. So you've got three sort of stage process. The teeth on this model aren't particularly big. You don't really see huge amounts of uh, the effect but um, it's very, you know, just to just stick a little dollop of white on the end of each uh, tooth tip. So once that little bit of white is now added, what I'm going to do is actually go over all the, the mouth areas with uh, Cassandor Yellow, the glaze that I've uh, used and spoke about, about doing the flame effect, the orange flame effect. Um, this kind of just makes the mouth look a bit more rotten. There's a sort of an orangey yellow glaze and instead of being sort of nice and clean teeth effect, it makes it just look like it's a little bit more, a little bit more manky. They haven't been to the dentist in a while, uh, haven't flossed, and uh, yeah, just makes it give that yellowy, uh, you know, 60 cigarettes a day kind of look. Uh, something evil and horrible that uh, that Chaos and Zinch would really appreciate. completely optional step then there are a couple of tongues that are on the model so I'm just going to paint those with a bit of purple and then just glaze those with Carabao Crimson um, completely optional um, you can paint them in the flame effect or you can just leave them blue they're very small details um, you haven't got to do this bit if you don't want to um, I just thought I'd give it a try on this particular model and then as I said Carabao Crimson just to glaze over the top give it a little bit of depth because there are a couple of little mini folds in the tongue area um, and that just sort of ties it together and makes it not look so stark and purpley and just gives it a little bit of a, a little bit of depth 
but completely optional step. Um, so I wouldn't overly worry about it, to be honest. Here we go, I've changed cameras slightly now so we can actually see a lot more detail. So apologies for a little bit earlier, if you're getting a bit frustrated with the video and you've stuck with it, um, you can now see exactly where we've got to. So we can see on the left here the model that I've done with the green effect, and you can see those yellowy teeth, and you can see all the, the highlighting a lot better now. And I've also got a second model ready to go that I've done with the uh, all the way up to the white on the flame effect. And what we're going to do now is do a sort of a red flame effect. And these will match all my little brimstone horrors. So it's a very similar technique to uh, uh, painting brimstones really. So what I'm starting with is a gold and yellow, um, smoothly and evenly painted all over the uh, all over those white parts. Again, be be really careful not to try and get it onto the onto the blue that you just spent all that time doing. And then uh, yeah, then we'll be ready to go with the next effect. So this is just uh, just get all those parts up to a yellow stage. And there we go, once we've got yellow again, you can see just how many little flamey bits there are all over this model. Uh, quite a few. Ra. Coming for you. Um, and you can see where I've focused on this particular one, I've gone with a more lighter head. So I've gone purple at the, on the skirt end and then a lighter on the head end. So it just makes it a little bit more different to the, uh, to the first one we've done. And what we're gonna do now is give all those yellow bits a coat of Cassandora yellow and that will just sort of fill in all the folds with a nice uh, orange depth and give it a bit more fiery look. So just picking out all the yellow and just applying a nice little uh, amount of Cassandora yellow all over those flames. And then once that's all applied, it should look something like this. And it looks a little bit yes, less yellow and more sort of orangey fire. Um, and again, you can see all the all the details on the dry brush effect uh, and all those glazes, the, uh, the purple through blue. And you can see the difference between the two. Not sure which one I prefer yet, um, but I'm doing a mix of uh, both types across the army. So uh, I, can, I can pick and choose. So the next stage then is to take the hot orange and you want to dilute this down to about four parts water, one part orange and then just apply it to the very ends of the uh, the yellow flames. Uh, looks like my camera efforts have failed. I'm too close to my camera again. Really difficult to see through the, uh, through the viewport, or not the viewport, the display on the back of the camera when you're trying to paint off camera, but there we go. But simply applying that orange to the, to the tip, you can see it looks already a little bit more hot and fiery. So the next stage then to complete that fire effect is to add um, some dark red. I'm using red gore from Vallejo. And you want to thin this down a little bit, um, perhaps not as much as the, uh, the orange, which was about four to one. Maybe just a one to one on this, just so that it flows nicely off the brush. And all we're doing is applying it to the very ends of the flames, not as far up as the orange, obviously, into the yellow and just pick out all the flame tips just to give it that added heat. And once all that red's applied, we end up looking like this. And you can see it already looks all super flamey and super hot. And there's one final bit to do, uh, and that's to apply some sort of black soot effect. So what I'm doing is just using a standard black. Uh, I've got a Vallejo uh, black here, um, but any black will do. And uh, yeah, just sort of lightly dry brush this onto all over the flame parts. And you can be quite random with this because this is sort of reflecting the the cooler parts of the flame as flames cool in, in weird and wonderful patterns and you end up with sort of a soot effect and uh, you know black parts of the flame and just sort of randomly dry brush quite lightly over over the whole area of the yellow orange and red that's been done and it will sort of pick out um, it will pick itself out because it is relatively a dry brush but just making sure that it's not too thick and, and, and clumps on you just keep it nice and subtle uh, and just uh, just go over all the bits of flame. And that's exactly the same effect I've done on this brimstone horror. So it does match into the rest of the army, which is very convenient. So now I've got an awful lot of, uh, of brimstone horrors ready for my army because apparently they are super OP, apparently, according to all the internets. Um, but every, every Zinch army needs Brimstone Horrors. And there we go, that's him complete. I've got to do the teeth, obviously, on that one and finish the details. But that shows the two different styles I've got. And as I said, I have been working on a number in the background. So I've got nine in total. That's a convenient number, being a Zinch person. 
I've gone with three with the orange flames and then six with the oxide flames. And hopefully we can see a little bit clearer here um, the uh, the total effect. So I've got sort of nine, the nine guys here, all done, all in a in a big batch. Um, I'll try and get some pictures up at the end of the video just to give a clearer look. But yeah, there we go. That's a, a nine batch job flamers of Zinch painting video. Okay, guys. So uh, just a few photos then of some of the completed models we can see here. Uh, over the next uh, next few seconds so thank you very much for watching I hope it's been of use to you in your quest for a little bit of speed painting a little bit of zinch goodness hope you enjoyed please do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it please don't forget to subscribe click the bell button all that YouTube good stuff and I shall catch you on the next video